So now the main thing in our template that looks different than the mockup is the spacing between the two menus and the light gray border between them. So first, let's tackle that border. What should that border be associated with? Should it be associated with this navigation here or this navigation here, or should it be a separate element altogether? Well, you could do it any of those three ways, but to me it makes sense to add the border to the secondary navigation here, because if we add a third line, we would want a border between that and the next menu. Whereas if we add the border to this primary menu and it's at the bottom of the element, and then we add a third line, that border won't separate the second and third line because it won't have any border. Hopefully that makes sense. So of the three options, what I'm going to do is add the border to the secondary menu. Now that's going to be our alt here. So we'll add our styles right here and we'll do border bottom. And then let's figure out what color we should use. I'm going to jump to our variables to look at our color palette. And now the background I believe is dark gray. So maybe medium darker gray seems like the best fit if we can make it work. So I'll copy that variable. I'll paste it in here to border bottom. And then I'm going to use this as a shorthand so we can specify the color, the style, and the width all in one. We'll make this solid and we'll make it one pixel. That's as thin as we can make the border. And again, it's okay to use an absolute unit here. We'll save this, jump back to the browser and refresh. Ah, we wanted it border top. Let's change this to border top. Okay, so it looks a little bit bold. So we might need yet another gray to work with, but let's get our spacing right before that happens. Let's tackle the spacing between the primary navigation and the border. So since the border is from the element below it, we could use margin or padding in order to add that space. On the bottom element, we're only going to be able to use padding because margin exists outside of the border. In general, when we're trying to separate one element from another, we should use margin where we can because that's what margin means. It means space between it and other things. So let's measure the margin over here real quick. So it's around 13 pixels. This is a good candidate for using a relative size. So we'll add margin bottom. And we want the margin to be relative to the size of the text. So we're going to use EMs. So we'll use the px2em function and we'll pass in 13. We'll save this and refresh. Uh, so it looks like we added the margin to the wrong element. Let's cut this and add it to our main navigation here. Save it and refresh. And we have some spacing, though it looks a little bit big right now. Let's tackle the spacing between these elements and the border. Again, we're going to have to use padding on this nav in order to achieve that because the border belongs to this element. And we'll use the same value so that it's the same margin size for the top and the bottom. And I'll paste it in this nav alt right here. We'll change it to padding top and we'll refresh. And this is looking pretty good. Now I want to measure the space between the bottom of this text and the border. It's about 18 pixels. And then between the border and the top of the bottom text. And that's about 13 pixels. So we're about five pixels heavy at the top. Let's see where that's coming from. I'm gonna inspect this element and we'll look at this nav and we see the margin down there. And you can also tell that there's a few pixels below the text before we hit the margin. So that's probably where our issue is. So let's go ahead and subtract a few pixels from this margin. We'll bump it to nine, save it and refresh. And that looks much better. So now I still think we need to do something about this color here to make it more in line with what we have there. So I think we're going to have to add another gray color to our palette. I'm going to jump back to Photoshop and I'm going to zoom in and see what color this is. I'll use the color picker tool and it's 5D, 5D, 5D. All right, so if you go back to our editor and we look at our variables, this is going to land somewhere between dark gray and medium darker gray. Again, I have to apologize to the English language for stretching it so thin, but we're going to add a new color called medium darkest gray. And we'll go grab the hexadecimal value from Photoshop. We'll paste it in, save it, and we'll use this value for our border right here. We jump back to the browser and refresh. That looks better. 